everyone happy Monday my name is Beb McCullough of Flamingo Toes and I'm very excited to be here with you today as we are sewing up row three in our spooky lane sew along that's the quilt behind me here we're taking it a row at a time so the first week we did that cute moon and stars row and then last week we sewed together our wide turn dash blocks, which are infinitely spookier than regular turn dash blocks, but made exactly the same way. <laughs> and then this week we are sewing up the bats, which are very, very fun. And even though there's several steps to the process, we only have to do three of them. And they're so cute that they don't, you don't mind sewing them together because um, they just look really cute. <laughs> and you get to see the whole bat sort of come together as you make it, so it's really fun. So here's our bat. It looks very, very cute. Isn't this a fun block? He's kind of spooky. Um, so you're gonna do three of these. If you want to make your quilt um, exactly like mine, as shown on the cover, then you're going to use the uh, Spooky Skeleton, the Skeleton Flamingo. You're gonna use the spiderweb print and you're gonna use the black cat print. So it's a gray cat actually, but on a black background. So those are the three prints. A couple of those are directional and I'll tell you, directional fabrics, and I'll tell you where to watch out for those as we sew. But um, I just wanted to thank you guys. Normally our videos are live, but I'm traveling this week, so this video is recorded. And I miss chatting with you all, but I will be back live next week as we sew up the, the cute uh, shoe fly blocks and our kitty blocks. So those are all really fun. Our video might be a little bit longer because we have several steps and I'll walk you through those um, next week. But first, let's talk about bats. And before we do that, we need to talk about giveaways. So it's time to do our giveaways. And every week I have a giveaway, which is just my way of thanking you guys for tuning in and showing how much I appreciate what a good community we have. And they're very easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment and that counts as your entry. And you do need to comment on YouTube. I know um, that's hard and sometimes it's easier to figure out on like a computer than a mobile device, but that is where you can leave your comments. And last week we had a fun giveaway. It was for um, an assortment of really cool things. One of them is this Hush Hush 2 fabric uh, bundle. This is a 10 inch stacker, which is the same as a layer cake. We just don't call them layer cakes at Riley Blake. <laughs> so Hush Hush 2 is Riley Blake's low volume collection. And you can see, it's a little bit hard to see with that glare, but there are very sweet different low volumes, um, all light backgrounds with different prints, each one designed by a different Riley Blake designer. This is in stores now. I do actually have some pre-cuts of Hush Hush 2 left in my shop. I think I have 10 inch stackers and maybe a couple fat quarter bundles left maybe um, so and then we're getting ready for hush hush 3 which I believe comes out this fall so we're very excited about that so along with that to help you make your quilt I have three five inch stackers that I've been hoarding of blue jean so this is Christopher Thompson's collection it came out I think this is it's two collections ago for him but it's a beautiful denim inspired collection. You know Christopher and how well he does his blues. So we've got navies and whites and chambray colors and several of the prints have this blue jean texture to them and it's gorgeous. And these will pale, pair really well together. Um, blue, well, any collection looks great with Hush Hush too, right? But the blue jean will really pair well with it, I think. And in addition to that, I have Two of my favorite colors of Orifil spools. This is the 50 weight, so you can use it for piecing. But these are 2024 and 2615. It's like a light cream color and then a gray, like a pale gray. So these are great for piecing all sorts of things. And our winner, this is from last week, our winner is 
Carol T E S O three O well zero three zero three. So let me um, show you that. Carol, you're our winner from last week. So send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will get your prize out to you next week when I get back. <laughs> and then um, I gathered up a fun assortment of things for this week's prize. I was in a 10-inch stacker mood. Let's switch cameras. <laughs> So I was in a 10 inch stacker mood and so I found a, a 10 inch stacker of maple. You guys, maple is one of my favorite fall collections ever. Look at these colors with the rust and gold and the peaches and then this like eggplanty purple. I'm not normally a purple girl but I love the addition of the purple in this um, fall collection. So the florals in this print are gorgeous. This is Mabel by Gabriel Neal Design. You can probably still find some of it in stores now, um, but it's a beautiful collection. So I have a 10 inch stacker of that for you. I also have a Lori Holt 60 inch tape measure. Very, very cute and always perfect for carrying in your bag. I have a Liberty pin cushion. I bought up a few of these for you guys for giveaways and I love them. They're so pretty. Pretty little floral apple pin cushion in Liberty fabrics, no less. And then, because you need pins for your new pin cushion, I have some Dritz long ballpoint pins. These are one and a half inch pins, and there are 75 in here. So they're gonna look really cute in your brand new pin cushion. So I've got all the things you need to just start sewing. <laughs> So this is this week's giveaway. If you'd like to be entered, all you need to do is leave a comment on the video and that will count as your entry. So we are um, going to make bats this week and I want to show you the schedule so you can keep up with what we're doing. So this is our Spooky Lane quilt sew along dates. Um, so we started with our kickoff on the 31st and as I said we are sewing up the moon and we sewed up the moon and star row the first week then the churn dash row. This week is bats and then we'll continue on down the quilt literally as we go down each row at a time and um, it'll get a little bit more complicated because on some of these next two rows after this week we have two different types of blocks to make but um, there, there's not very many of them. So even though you have two cats and six shoe fly blocks next week, this, there's only six small shoe fly blocks and they go together fast. And then there's only one of each cat. So it doesn't really take that much longer than sewing up you know, a really detailed row. So don't be afraid. And also don't stress if you get behind. <laughs> we still have lots of time before Halloween. So that um, is no, no rush. So are you guys ready to start sewing up bats? Um, I will say that it helps to like have your pencil handy and mark off each step when you sew it um, and each piece when you cut it. So um, the pieces are all different sizes, so you want to be careful that you're sewing the right piece to the right um, piece. <laughs> and so if you have some alphabeties or little alphabet stickers or something like that, this would be a really good week to pull those out and make sure that you have all of your background and print pieces labeled correctly so that when you go to your machine, you're able to pull the right pieces and that you're able to kind of um, make sure that you're sewing the right things together because that really is helpful when we go to put the whole bat together. If you're off on something, then it's just going to throw it all off. So just being careful as we sew um, and paying attention to that. So let's get started, okay? Are you guys ready? So here is our cute, I'm gonna shimmy this over here. Here is our cute little bat block. He's really fun. And so like I said, the two directional ones that you're going to sew are, if you're using my fabrics and you want it the same as me, this um, spiderweb print is, it could be multi-directional, but it is directional really because the spider webs kind of start at the top and then the spiders come down. And then those uh, gray cats on black fabric. So what you'll need to do when you're cutting out your fabric is you will need to be careful that the A piece, which um, is this piece right here, 
you're going to cut this out kind of against the width of the fabric. So if you're cutting like a long strip for all these pieces, you can cut, um, and maybe you need to not worry about that because you guys are, most of you are probably using fat quarters, but pay attention that when you cut out your A fabrics, it's going to have be kind of an up and down rectangle. When you cut out the C fabrics and really all the other squares, it doesn't matter about, but these and these need to be cut out in opposite directions so that you can have the long rectangles going this way with your direction and then this tall rectangle going up and down with your direction. So when it comes to cutting, note that if you are sewing with any kind of directional fabric. Um, and then um, your background fabrics, you are, um, so for the print fabric instructions, you're going to cut those out A through D for each bat. So you'll cut out one A from each print and two pieces for their B fabrics from each print, etc. The background fabric cutting instructions E through K are for all the bats together. So you don't have to multiply that times three. So I don't want that to confuse you guys. So are you ready to start? We're gonna start with this A section here and I am going to make mine up in this fun spider spider there's no spiders it's a skeleton flamingo and it's one of my favorite prints in the collection because I just I think it's darling and so much fun so what we need to do first is we need to draw our diagonal lines on our E background pieces and so I'm going to turn these over and draw a diagonal line it doesn't matter which direction you're drawing them so we're just gonna draw two here like that. So we have our diagonal lines and we're going to place one on the bottom. If you're doing this directionally, it'll be the bottom of your A piece. If it doesn't matter, if you know, if your direction doesn't matter, then you'll just choose one side. But you want that line to go top left, bottom right because we're wanting to make a point out of the bottom of this block. So here's where our line is. And I'm gonna sew on that marked line, trim one quarter of an inch away and um, press, so we're gonna go sew. So we'll be doing a little bit of back and forth here today <laughs> because we have steps to follow. So I'm just sewing on that marked line. And if you are um, making all three of your bats at once, I recommend grabbing all of your A pieces and chain piecing them together so that you can do them all at once. So here's our seam. Now we'll go back and trim and press. So we're going to trim this off. I'm going to grab our little mini rotary cutter here. Rotary uh, mat. You guys know that I love my little mini mat here. This is from Fat Quarter Shop, and I just love being able to do my trimming on here. It makes it so nice and easy. So let's bring over the iron. So now I've trimmed a quarter of an inch away from that seam, and I'm going to fold that out, and we're going to press. You want to press at this step because you are going to sew another piece on top of this piece and you don't want, you want that seam to be nice and flat. Otherwise you won't have a good point at the end of your bat. So here's our piece and now we're going to take the other E piece and we're gonna place it also on the bottom but on the opposite corner with the line going the opposite way. So here's the, which way the line is going there top right to bottom left. So we're gonna repeat that step. We're gonna sew on that line and then we're going to come back and press and trim. Trim and press in that order. <laughs> okay, so I am just going to go ahead and sew on my marked line. And you can see we're sewing over that section where the other piece was so that they overlap a little bit, a quarter of an inch to be exact. So now we're gonna press and this forms the bottom of our bat.
You guys didn't know you'd be sewing up a bat's bottom today, did you? <laughs> well, maybe you did. That's okay. He's a cute bat. <laughs> okay, so now we've trimmed and we're gonna open that out and press that and that forms the bottom section of the bat. So how cute is that? Very, very cute. And you can see our seams overlap here a quarter of an inch and that will allow us when we sew the bottom um, sashing in place, that will give us a nice point on uh, our bat. So we're going to switch over and now we're going to do the F and B pieces. These are the pointy ears of your bat. <laughs> this is pointy ears. <laughs> so you're basically going to make a flying geese block. So you're going to place, you're going to draw your diagonal lines. Again, if you are using directional fabric, you'll want to double check how these lay in place before doing this because you um, probably want your fabrics to be up. But the other thing about this is that your fabrics, these are pretty small squares. So if you're working with the spider web print and it's sideways on this tiny ear, it's really not going to show. It's more going to show later when we do the bottoms of the bats. So if you want to have your fabrics be directional, you can always lay them in place, do your double check and fold them back the way that they're gonna go and then you can see, okay, yes, this is directionally correct or if you need to move it, you can do that. And I recommend doing your check before drawing your lines. So you would place your fabric down, check and see it's the way you want, then draw your line and then go sew. So we're going to do the same steps we just did. Sew on that line, trim, and press. Okay, here you also want to be especially accurate because the smaller our pieces are when we're doing these stitch and flips, the more important it is that we have them lined up correctly when we sew because that gives us a more straight block after we trim and press, especially because we're working with a seam on a bias, so it's easy to get distorted. <clears throat> and if your piece isn't laying on here flat correctly, then when you go to press it back, it can be um, not square. So that can give you some troubles. And if you have, um, you know, flying geese papers that you wanna use for these steps, feel free to do that as well. Okay, so now we're going to uh, trim and press. So we're going to trim that off, just like we did the other one. And we're pressing this open now. And again, you want to press because we're going to overlap those seams. So you want that to be nice and flat or else it won't um, be a really great flying geese block. So now we're going to place the other um, what is this B piece on so that the line goes the other way now? It's going top right bottom left and we're going to sew <laughs> I told you there was lots of back and forth today <laughs> So we're sewing on the marked line And again, this is where you can chain piece if you are making multiple bats at a time. We're just doing one at a time, but here you could sew all the left ears on, then sew all the right ears on, and that kind of thing. And that will speed up the process because you'll be making three at once, essentially. So now we're going to go trim and press. And fortunately, we are only doing three of these. So even though we have several steps in this cute little guy, um, with only three to do, it, it goes pretty quickly. So I trimmed that off and pressed. And that gives us the very cute top of our bat, which we will sew together in just a minute. So I'm gonna set that aside. So to make the bottom of the wings, you're going to follow the steps that I just showed you for the ears, 
but you're going to use the larger D and H blocks and you're going to, if you're using directional fabrics, make it this way so that the points go, um, so the background is on the bottom rather than on the top. So those blocks will look like this and I've already sewn those up for you guys. Um, it's the, like I said, the exact same steps, except for if you are using directional fabric, you'll want to check your directions upside down so that the blocks look like this, not like this for the ears. Okay. So what we're going to do once we've sewn those all up is we're going to make two sets of these and we're going to sew those together. So we'll make, and that's one for each wing. So we're gonna do two of those with a seam here and a seam there. And so I'll take those over to the machine. We're gonna do them both at once. Well, chain piece them because you guys know I love to chain piece. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in Tennessee. I hope it's very nice for you guys as well. Um, I think we're gonna get hot next week. I'm grabbing for some pins here. I just want to make sure that my um, flying geese are lined up at the bottom. So I'm doing just a quick little check here and I am going to pin at the bottom so that they don't shift around a lot. I am off a tiny bit. I will show you guys this. One flying geese is slightly different than the other, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. That's just a very small amount and we'll fix it in the seam allowance. So I usually don't fuss about that kind of thing too much. I'm using the slightly larger one as my seam guide and um, I'm just going for it. <laughs> because once it's all sewn together, and I'm making sure that seam doesn't get funky when it's uh, sewn over. Um, I'm going to repeat that step, fold these together, right sides together, check and make sure that my little flying geese are um, lining up the way I'd like them to. These are more appropriately sized. <laughs> and I didn't cut my thread, I'm just going to keep sewing. So you'll make two, uh, two of these for each bat, so a total of six of these. Um, three different fabrics because we need two for each bat. So now I'm going to clip these apart and I'm going to open them up to show you how they work. So that is the bottom of our little bat wing here, here and here. So now we'll go to press those and then we'll start assembling our, our bat wings. So these you're going to press to one side. It doesn't really matter which side you press to because we're not nesting them with another seam. If these feel bulky to you, especially down here where we've got the flying geese overlapping, feel free to press them open. That isn't going to be a problem. Um, it's, it's your prerogative for sure. <laughs> um, and we will... Um, you can just do whatever you prefer, but the pattern shows it with the seam pressed to the side. I did that rather awkwardly. <laughs> so now we are going to, um, oh, we have one more step to do before we start assembly. And this is the top of the wing. So this is the C piece, and we're going to do little snowballed corners for each of the top corners of this piece. So we're putting our G background pieces on here. And again, this is where you wanna make sure that your pieces are the correct size and you've labeled them by your alphabet because these are kind of close in size to the E pieces, but you wanna use the right piece on the right piece. <laughs> the right background piece on the right print piece. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're gonna sew, our lines will be going from bottom left to top right and top left to bottom right. So we'll go here and here to snowball those corners. And I'm not drawing the lines on these. I, if you don't have a laser on your machine or some kind of guide, you can also use that great um, seam guide tape. It's like a washi tape. You put it on the bottom of your, like from your machine feed dogs out and you make sure it's straight 
but there's a line in the center and then quarter inch lines on either side and that really works well if you don't want to draw your lines all the time if you find yourself doing a lot of stitch and flip blocks so we're going to take these over the machine sew those seams and then we will trim and be ready to assemble So because we are not sewing um, anything, these don't overlap in any way, we can have them both on here at the same time and I can sew both at the same time. So I will cut my thread in between because it's a long distance between the two. But, um, but you can just go ahead and place them both on. Make sure they're lined up straight, of course but just go from one to the other. And you can do that for all um, of the wings of the bats. Two wings per bat, of course, and then times three is six wings total. You can also make your bats all the same fabric if you would like to. Um, so here we have our seams. You can see mine goes here and here, and now I'm going to trim those off and press them. I know it seems like a lot of back and forth steps, but I promise you sewing like these little snowball corners and making the flying geese, they're what adds the details to the bat. So it makes it really um, a lot cuter block if you have a few of these steps. My rotary cutter is coming a little loose. We're going to tighten that baby back up. It's telling me it's time to change the blade. <laughs> it's just loosening itself because it's like, Beth, come on. We'll do that after. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to open up that um, little snowballed corner. You can see these blocks sometimes called snowballed corners or stitch and flip or sew and flip. There's different, um, all kinds of different names, but it's basically the same idea. You're sewing on something, you're cutting off the corner, and then you're pressing it out and that kind of gives us a cute rounded look to the top of our wing so what we're going to do now is we're going to assemble our bat wing so you're going to place this piece we just assembled and we're going to sew it here at the this sew it here sew an eye piece here then we're going to put the bottom of our bat wing, which are those two flying geese you sewed together. So that kind of creates the wing. And then you're going to sew a J piece at the bottom. And this forms the sides of the bat each side. So we're going to make two of these sets per bat. And you can definitely chain piece this. We're going to take all the pieces and I'll show you how to do this over at the machine. You want to make sure that you are looking at your pattern booklet while you sew to make sure that each piece is laid out correctly. Or you can lay it out on like a, a block board and um, I looked over at my block board like you could see it. <laughs> and then move it to your machine that way. So. Let's go do that. Okay, so I'm going to lay out my little um, bat wing, one of them here, just so I'm looking at it. I like to do this on my machine table here. And I'm gonna lay the other one out over here. So you want to make sure that the Snowball corners are at the top of your wings and that the flying geese blocks are background fabric on the bottom. You want to basically be making an M there rather than a W. Okay, so now I've got both my blocks laid out. I am going to take the top background piece and put it on top of our print piece and we're going to sew that. And then without cutting our thread here at the bottom of this piece, we're going to do the same thing over here. And we're just going to build these blocks at the same time. So we're going to sew this together now. And you do not have to assemble your wings this way. If you want to sew them one at a time, that's definitely fine. 
I certainly don't want it to confuse you, but um, if you want to speed up your sewing process, something like this can speed it up for you a little bit and make your assembly a little bit faster if you're doing things multi like together, you know, more than one at a time. So now we're going to open these up do it this way and we're going to place our <clears throat> I'm gonna actually flip this over because it's a little bit easier to sew this uh, big piece that's not pieced onto this piece that is multiple piece so we're gonna sew this together like this and these are uh, the top of our wing on top of our um, flying geese you also it helps to sew if you put your presser foot down <laughs> And I will tell you, we are playing Bob and Chicken today, so if we get all the way through this video, um, I am going to reward myself with a piece of chocolate if I don't have to fill the bobbin. If I have to fill the bobbin, then no chocolate for me. So we wanna make sure we do this correctly, so we're double checking, okay, that's laid out right, but then we'll flip it like we did the other one so that we're sewing these pieces together. And if it's getting confusing to worry about like, you know, all the little web piecing together, piece them together and then cut them apart if you want to. So there's no hard and fast rule that says you have to keep them web pieced together, which basically means you're sewing all the steps and you're not trimming those threads that are holding the blocks together in between them. I'll show you what I mean. So now we've got our bat, the top three sections of our bat sewn together, but they're held together in the center. So you can decide if you want to trim them or not. That one's a little frayed on the bottom, so I'm gonna flip it around. I don't wanna help, we can cut those strings off easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the bottom parts of the wing block right sides together with where they go, and now I'll sew on those. little bit of a slow start there. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna go across the bottom and this is just the background fabric so that we can make our wing blocks the same size as the head and body blocks. So I put this on here so that I know which way it goes on but I also want to make sure it's nice and straight before sewing so that I'm not um, you know, sewing on a piece that's crooked just to be faster. <laughs> we don't want to um, think that we're saving ourselves time when we're actually adding more time by, you know, having to do something that we're ripping out later. Nobody wants to have um, the seam ripper come out to play. <laughs> so now I'm going to take a second and um, cut these little threads apart and open this up to show you how cute the wing looks. So we have now two identical wings and we're gonna go press these and then we'll sew our body together. Okay, are you guys ready to press? We don't need our trimming anymore, which is lovely. <laughs> So we're gonna press these according to the pattern instructions, which means you're gonna press this one up this one up and this one down. So you'll note those little arrows in the pattern um, next to the block. Those are your pressing instructions. So you'll follow those to um, give yourself a nice flat block. So when I have multiple seams like this, I like to press on the wrong side and then flip it over and press on the right side. And I usually do a little spray of my flatter starch and then um, make sure my block is nice and flat. So that is one of our wings, but we were efficient and we made two at the same time. So I'm going to press the other one as well. And I'm going to trim off those um, little threads that I have here. <laughs> and now we're gonna flip this block over and we'll press on the, my starch is rolling away. We'll press on the right side as well. 
So there is our very cute two little wing blocks that are the same. And now we're going to sew the ears onto the body or the head and body. <laughs> so we're gonna place this right sides together and we will sew across here. So make sure that on this one, your points are pointing up as, to, as opposed to down like they were on the wings. So we're, let's go sew that. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna just sew right across here. The nice thing about being able to see this, you can sew either on this side or this side. Sometimes it goes through your machine a little smoother, like I said earlier, but if you sew on this side, you can see where that half square triangle, where it's not a half square triangle, where that flying geese point is, so you can make sure that you're not sewing above or below it, you're sewing right to it. And that way you can um, make sure that you have a nice point on the top of your flying geese. Well, in this case, it's the bottom of your flying geese. And you have to be a little bit more careful, but it's just a nice double check for you. See, I sewed right across it. And so when I turn it, um, I have a nice point there. So just something to be aware of and maybe try both ways and see what you prefer. So let's go press this. And we don't have any trimming at this part, so that's nice and fast. So I'm just going to press this. And this is the center portion of our bat. So now we're going to take these wing blocks, and you can see because we added sashing like a little bit of background fabric at the top and bottom of the wing, you can see that they line up and are the correct size to line up with the body. And those block measurements are in your pattern. So when you go through and you look and you'll be able to see, okay, I can tell the wing is supposed to be this. I can tell the body is supposed to be this. So you can double check your measurements as you go to make sure that you are on the correct track. So what we're gonna do is take over to the machine and we're gonna sew a wing on the left and right sides of the bat body. So let's go sew that in place and then we'll be assembled. Okay, I'm gonna put one wing right there and I'm going to line up this wing. The only place you have to watch for a seam meeting up is at the bottom of the ears before the body and it'll be matching up with this section that's the top sashing. So you can either use your thumb and finger and nest those blocks, we'll do that either way. And then if you want to make sure that you have a, you know, that seam doesn't shift on you, then you can just pop one little pin in there. You don't have to pin it if you don't want to, it's entirely up to you and how you feel you know, safest about the whole experience. <laughs> I started to say earlier that we're having lovely weather, and we are. Um, I think that, well, we are when I recorded this video, but I think by the time the video airs, it's going to be nice and toasty. It's like Autumn is saying, I'm coming, I'm just not here yet, so it's giving me hope. <laughs> So now you can see I've got one wing sewn on and I'm going to take the other wing and place it right sides together. Again, I'm going to nest up that little seam and I'm going to actually sew this one upside down because it's easier for me to sew less seams on the top of my machine. It just tends to like that better. So I'm sewing this way. And we're just going to go through the whole side of the bat. And I, you'll notice that I lift my presser foot when I get to a seam. Um, it's just to try and prevent that seam, if it's on the bias, from getting caught under the presser foot and um, not being straight. And it, sometimes it'll happen anyway, but it reduces bulk if you, um, if you do that. So here we are, we've sewn the bat together and that's all there is to it. You just have to make three of these cute little guys.
So let's go back and finish up. Okay, so all we have to do to finish is press and we're going to press the wings in towards the body of the bat. And again, we have several seams in here. So if you are feeling like you are too bulky, then go ahead and press those seams open. But if not, you if you don't want to, you can also press and then press from the top side like I'm doing. And this is where um, a clapper would come in really handy because we have a little bit of bulk, and I have one, I use one a lot, I just don't have it over here at the machine. We have a little bit of bulk, but if you go ahead and press and then set your clapper on here, which the big Riley Blake one would cover this whole bat section, you set your um, clapper on there and then the heat from the fabric kind of absorbs into the wood and it makes your blocks lay flatter. So you would just press each one, like press, set the clapper on it, work on the next one, then move the clapper, and it just gives your blocks a little bit of a flatter look. So it's fun that way, and it's super helpful. So these are our bats. I don't have the cat one to show you, but they're all very, very cute little bats, <laughs> and super fun and simple, simple to sew together if you follow it step by step. So those are our bats for this week. I'm excited to be back next week live with you guys again, and we'll sew up those cute shoe fly blocks and our little kitties, of course. Feel free to get creative with your kitties and make them, you know, if you want to grab from your stash and make them black also, that would be really cute If and, you know, make your quilt slightly spookier. I like my little orange tabbies. <laughs> so... Um, I hope you guys have a fabulous week. I will see you back next Monday for the next row. And don't forget to leave a comment on the video if you would like to be entered into this week's giveaway. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a fabulous week. Bye.